looked at error analysis and uh, stability. So we first uh, took a look at how does how how much error do we make when we use a finite difference operator to approximate a second order derivative. Right, so we did this using Taylor series analysis. We expanded the values at adjacent grid points using the value and derivatives of the function at a particular grid point. And then we show that we can cancel a lot of terms and uh, uh, so that the dominant term, the first term, the largest term is going to be the derivative we want to approximate. And then there are approximation errors that are a result of not being able to cancel all the terms. Okay, so then we also looked at how much does, how does the approximation error affect the solution, right? So uh, that, is, that is related to stability. So if a numerical method is stable, the error is going to contribute, the error in the approximation is going to contribute to the solution error, but the contribution is not going to exponentially amplify it actually exponentially decays. So every time there is new error added in each time step, but the result of the previous error added is going to decay exponentially if the scheme is stable. If a scheme is unstable, the error added in previous time steps is going to exponentially amplify. Therefore, our whole solution may become like 10 to the 50, as we saw on the screen last time. Right? So. Today we are going to continue talking about that phenomenon. How can we be sure that a solution, a particular solution method is stable? How do we perform stability analysis? So let's start by looking at the discretization we had last time. So the discretization we had is dui dt is equal to kappa times ui minus 1 plus ui plus 1 minus 2 times ui divided by delta x squared. So that's the equation we had before. All right. And we have derived the error equation. So if we define, well, let's take this to be hats because these are our numerical solution. So if we define the error to be the difference between the numerical solution and the true solution, the true solution is taking an analytical solution and take the value at the grid point i, then we know the error we have derived. The error also satisfies a particular equation. So the error is going to satisfy dei dt equal to kappa times ei minus 1 plus, sorry, ei plus 1 minus 2 times EI, so the same finite difference operator plus the truncation error plus the difference, I think the difference between uh, the finite difference operator, so uh, UI minus 1 plus UI plus 1 minus 2 UI, so the finite difference approximation of the second order derivative minus the true differential operator evaluated at xi, right? So this is the truncation error analysis, the approximation error analysis we did before the stability analysis. And this is the stability portion of the, of the problem. So our next question really is, does this operator exponentially amplify? previously added error or does it exponentially decay the previously added error? To perform this analysis, the simplest way, the simplest scenario for us to be able to perform that analysis is when we have a periodic domain. Okay, so if the domain is periodic, there is a very simple way to perform this stability analysis. This is called the uh, a von Neumann stability analysis. It applies to the scenario where the domain is periodic. No matter in 1D, 2D, or 3D, as long as the spatial domain is periodic and the grid points are uniformly distributed, then you can apply this von Neumann stability analysis. So how does it work? 
It works by pretty much the same idea as we used in the first, uh, maybe the second lecture, we used the Fourier analysis. We used the Fourier analysis on a differential equation, on the partial differential equation. Here, we use the discrete version of the Fourier series, the discrete Fourier series. Instead of applying it on the differential operator, we apply it on the discrete finite difference operator. So the idea idea is expand. Uh, it doesn't matter here, either ui or ei with discrete Fourier series, right? I'm just going to write it as DFS. And, um, and substitute into the finite difference operator. Okay, let's see in this case how it works. 